So, to discuss U.S. militarism or U.S. aggression and military intervention in Asia, in Asia, Asia Pacific, that would cover a period of more than 100 years, more than a century. Uh, why more than a century? We will, we will find out soon enough. But uh, since we don't have too much time, I think uh, we will. I would think we will center on or we'll focus on those points, which uh, which I I guess you don't know yet. But some things, especially your students, your intellectuals, uh, you probably already know 90% of about U.S. aggression in Asia. And uh, the previous speakers, especially Ms. Davidson, have covered a lot of ground too, especially on the recent uh, war on terror in Afghanistan, Iraq, and so on. So, uh, trying to focus on what is it that I can add to your knowledge. Um, well, we all know that the 20th century is the, beyond doubt the bloodiest and most violent century in the history of mankind. But maybe we could add that much of that blood is on the hands of U.S. imperialism. And U.S. imperialism arose a century ago, or a little more than a century ago, at the end of the 19th century. Um, we all know who Samuel Clemens is, right? Samuel Clemens. Better known as Mark Twain. And Mark Twain is a, or the author of Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, The Prince and the Pauper, maybe books we read when we were in the primary school or high school. <laughs> so what does it have to do with U.S. aggression in the Pacific? Next slide. Mark Twain. Next slide. Mark Twain was one of the first anti-imperialists. An American author, but uh, he wrote a book about American imperialism in the Philippines. And I think that was the title. And in that book, he said, I have read carefully the Treaty of Paris, you all know what the Treaty of Paris was, which ended the Spanish-American War, and I have seen that we do not intend to free but to subjugate the people of the Philippines. We have gone there to conquer, not to redeem. Next slide, please. It should, it seems to me, be our pleasure and duty to make those people free and let them deal with their own domestic questions in their own way. And so I am an anti-imperialist. I am opposed to having the eagle put its talents on any other land. Why was he saying this? Because as we all know from our Philippine history, when the Americans came to colonize the Philippines, it was under the pretext of what? Benevolent assimilation. Uh, President McKin then President McKinley's statement that uh, uh, there was a big debate on whether the US should go across the seas across the globe, across the Pacific, to colonize this small uh, group of islands. And uh, to finally put an end to the debate, uh, President McKinley one day said to the US Congress that he had prayed fervently, and in the night, the good Lord had come to him and had told him that, yes, go and colonize those people, Christianize them, educate them. So that was the first pretext. But we also all know that the U.S. at that time was a rising uh, industrial power, needed colonies, needed uh, um, an open market, needed cheap labor. And also for that reason, the U.S. was not only in the Philippines, the U.S. was also in China. The U.S. was involved in uh, the Boxer Rebellion of, I think that was almost at the same time, 1900, where uh, the Chinese people 
there was a strong Chinese movement that uh, that had aimed or that had struggled to expel the foreign uh, powers that were already in, uh, converging on China. But uh, we will go back to that later. Uh, let's have the next slide, please. This is Major General James Franklin Bell. Uh, does the name ring a bell? Um, he was one of the U.S. generals who, who was involved in the Philo-American War. He was notorious, actually, because of the... Uh, he was one of those who... Or he was primarily the one who developed the tactics of what we now call the counter-guerrilla or counter-insurgency tactics of the U.S. Did it in Batangas and justified it in fact, uh, justified the, but the violations, admitting that they were, he was going to make, he was going to give orders to violate general orders, uh, which were mostly for the protection of the human rights of the civilians. Uh, he developed the concentration camp. Well, to, to make a long story short, uh, more than 100,000 Filipinos, and that was a big number at that time, in Batangas were killed or died by, uh, by war or by disease because of the tactics that General Bell used. Uh, he admitted this in a May, 9, May 1901 interview when he said one-sixth of the natives, uh, next slide please, one-sixth of the natives of the son have either been killed or have died. The loss of life by killing has been great, but I think that not one man has been slain except where his death served the legitimate purposes of war. But you see, the, the term legitimate has been stretched by General Bell by arguing that because the Filipino is tricky and crafty, uh, they had to resort to these uh, new counterinsurgency measures, which were really uh, violations of human rights. Uh, it's too bad we cannot go into the details now, but uh, may we have the next slide, please? One of his colonels in Batangas was General uh, Colonel Jacob Smith. Uh, shortly after that, the Batangas campaign, there was this Balangiga incident, and I suppose you know what the Balangiga incident was. Balangiga is in Samar. Uh, a company, an entire company of American troops was ambushed by the Filipino revolutionaries, and the Americans retaliated by sending uh, Colonel then he became a general, uh, Jacob Smith, who ordered that all who are above 10 years of age should be killed and everything should be raised to the ground. Uh, a movie was made out of this. Uh, Franklin Bell, by the, by the way, uh, was awarded the Medal of Honor uh, for his exploits. So you see how uh, Generals who serve their masters well get rewarded well. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, before we go to this, another slide, please. This is Major General Medley Butler, U.S. Marines. I'm sure you don't know him. Who knows? Who had, oh, yes. <laughs> now, why is he so... Why are we giving him time here? Because he saw action in the Philo-American War, uh, he was he led a company of Marines, U.S. Marines, in the capture of Noveleta. Noveleta is in Cavite, no? Uh, where the Filipino revolutionaries under Aguinaldo were, of course, uh, rather strong. He was also involved in the Boxer Rebellion in China. He won one of his medals of honor there. The medal.